Hello students, today we are going to do Act 1, Scene 2, Line 39 to 74. In the last video, Nerissa asked Portia about the suitor, if she likes any of them. So Portia says, name them one by one and she would tell about what she feels about them. First, there is the Neapolitan Prince. She names the first prince Neapolitan Prince, that is from Naples, Italy. Neapolitans were known for their horsemanship. Then Portia says, Aye, that's a cult indeed, for he taught nothing but talk of his horse. Portia says he is a young, inexperienced man, man like a young horse, as he does nothing but talk about his horses, and he makes it a great appreciation to his own good Parts that he can shoe him himself and he says it is an addition to his own merits that he can shoe a horse him himself now shoe is an iron piece in the U shape that is put on hoofs of the horses so that when they run they don't slip and it's quite difficult to shoe a horse so that is the reason Neapolitan Prince takes pride in knowing how to perform the act. I am so much afeard my lady, his mother played false with the smith. Smith, I'm much afeard means I'm afraid. She says that his mother must have had a love affair with a blacksmith. Nerissa says then there is the county palatine. Next, Nerissa says, is the County Palatine. The Count from the Palatinate, the region on the west bank of the Rhine. He's a local ruler or a nobleman. Now, Count is a European title of nobility. Then Portia says, he taught nothing, nothing but frown, as who should say, if you will not have me choose. Portia says here that County Palatine, he always frowns to indicate, I don't care if you choose me or not. He hears merry tales and smiles not. He listens to good stories without a smile. I fear he will prove the weeping philosopher when he grows old, being so full of unmannerly sadness in his youth. She says he fears that he will be like the weeping philosopher when he grows older as in his youth he has an unpleasant sadness. Now who is the weeping philosopher? He is Heraclitus of Ephesus as he was so distressed by mankind that, that he went to the forest to live alone. I had rather be married to a dead head with a bone in his mouth than to either of these. She says she would rather marry a skull with a bone in its mouth than either of these. God, defend me from these two. She says, Oh God, protect me from these two suitors. Nerissa, how say you by the French Lord Mazer Liborn? So Nerissa asks, What do you think of French Lord Mazer Liborn. Portia, God made him and therefore let him pass for a man. Portia says because God created him, that is why we might call him a man. In truth, I know it is a sin to be a mocker, but he, he, why, he had the horse better than the Neapolitan, a better than bad habit of frowning than the Count Palatine. He's every man in no man. Actually, I know it's bad to make fun of people, but he talks even more about the merits of his horse than the Neapolitan. He frowns than the Count Palatine. He has every man's, char man's characteristics, but no personality of his own. If a thistle sings, he falls straight a capering. A thrush is an English bird, it sings, he immediately starts jumping up and down to the 
music. He will fence with his own shadow. That means he will fight with his own shadow. If I should marry him, I should marry 20 husbands. This means if I marry him, I might as well as marry 20 husbands as he is like 20 men all rolled into one. He has every man's characteristics. If he would despise me, I would forgive him. For if he love me to madness, I shall never execute him. She says, if he hates me, I would forgive him. And if he loves me passionately, I would not be able to return his love. Nerissa, what say you then to Falconbridge, the young baron of England? So she's saying here, what do you have to say about Falconbridge, the young baron from England? Baron is a title of honor. It's often heredity. Portia says, You know I say nothing to him, for he understands not me, nor I him. He hath neither Latin, French, nor Italian, and you will come into the court and swear that I have a poor pennyworth in English. She says, You know that I say nothing to him, because he can't understand me and I can't understand him. He knows neither Latin, French, nor Italian. And you could swear in a court of law that I have scanty knowledge of English. He is a proper man's picture, but alas, who can converse with a dumb show? He looked like a proper man, but who can talk with someone who can't talk back? How oddly... He is suited. I think he bought his doublet in Italy, his round horse in France, his bonnet in Germany, and his behavior everywhere. She means that how strangely he dresses. I think he bought his jacket in Italy, his socks in France, his hat in Germany, and his manners everywhere. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel for the latest updates and like the video if you have understood.